forward to today's fair here at Croke Park. We have, as ever, Cyril Farr, Tomás McKay and Gerlach Nan. Cyril, it's, it's hard around the country to get anybody who will actually call this senior game between the two. Both say it's, it's everybody says it's going to be very tight. Yeah, it looks to be that way. And it's really, it's kind of, you're looking at two contrasting styles. Tipperary play a very open, expensive style and Croke Park should suit their style of hurling. Nice and touchy and move the ball fast. Walford this year playing very measured, Michael. David Fitz has been playing kind of pulling all the lines back, playing it very tight early on and then is keeping the scores down and then as the game goes on, open up and winning their games. Oh, they're quite happy because they're winning. If this one is going to go down to the wire and like whoever gets through, they're in for a massive uh, final as well. But I think it's, 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 it's more of a contest this Sunday than last mm. Sunday. Yeah, Tomás? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you'd expect, um, I mean, Tip and Waterford have shown us over the past, they've been fantastic games and uh, like conditions today, Michael, it's absolutely brilliant for hurling. I mean, pitch outside looks Im immense and uh, like you'd, you'd say Tipperary maybe are the farm team coming in, have the momentum going on the basis of their win against Galway. I mean, they were put to the to the pin of their collars in that game and they came out very, very strong within the last five or seven minutes. Seven minutes. Um, look, it's it's down to, I suppose, tactically, Davey, will he go back to the, mm. the, the way he's been playing uh, all summer? I presume he will and bring an extra man back in defence and that's down to Tipperary will they be able to break that down Tip would lo love to see I think a high scoring game a very much open game and on the other side Waterford would like to keep it tight Sure Brilliant day for watching hur hurling uh, Ger I wouldn't like to be playing down there today <laughs> with the heat conditions you, well, want you, to, you certainly want to be in the hole of your health No even at 11 o'clock this morning coming along the heat was so intense I know the temperature is supposed to be only about 22 degrees mm. but you know the thing about Croke Park it's so shaded yeah. when you're down on that field you can add on five, four or five more degrees as Michael Devo said to me earlier on, it's a typical All-Ireland semi-final day. You wouldn't get a day as warm as this for the final, but it's just perfect. Yeah. No wind, the, p the, the pitch, I've never seen the pitch looking better, so there are no excuses for any team today not playing well. That's absolutely. Let's talk about the minor game before that, because uh, they are playing hurling in August in the Championship, and they will be hoping that uh, this year they'll be also, once again, playing hurling in September. But that remains to be seen. OK, let's uh, hear next from two men who understand this rivalry very well. Tomás Dunn of Tipperary and the former Waterford star Paul Flynn there with Joanne Cantwell. Yeah, they know all about tight battles between these two counties as well. Paul, obviously we'll just get to the big news, the fact that Brian O'Halloran is in for Seamus Prendergast. You have your own take on that. Well, Joanne, I suppose it's, it's a big risk from, from the water point of view, you know, putting in a, a young 19-year-old dead minor last year, just finished his leaving cert. Obviously, he's, been, he's picked on form, you know, playing, doing well in training. But, like, I mean, it is a big risk putting such a lad in at the start, you know, when the game is going to be hot and heavy for the first 10 or 15 minutes. And maybe later on, using his pace, you know, when the game counts down a bit, might be a better option. But, you know, that's what the, they're the decisions to live and die by. Tommy, you think you know from a Tipperary point of view why the move has been made? Yeah, I think they'll, they'll be probably bring in a young, pacey player. So I'd imagine they'll probably start him on Declan Fanning and try to expose Declan's perceived lack of pace in Crow Park. But uh, it could be wrong, but that's just a hunch that I have for now. You have had issues or worries, I suppose, about the fact that Tipperary haven't really nailed down a, a regular team in this championship. Well, every supporter has, Joanne. We were so poor against Cork that you know we, we needed to make a good few changes, and a lot of them are concentrated in the backs and on the half-forward line. So the half-forward line in particular is going to be a key area today because Brick has been one of the form players in the championship. So whatever combination Tip come up with there will need to work today. How do they get around uh, Brick Walsh, did you say, because he has been so influential this year? Well, it's, it's a, hopefully a matter of playing some smart hurling and, you know, maybe to try and avoid clearing balls down on top of him. But it's easier said than done. The, our backs are going to be under so much pressure from a hard-working half-hour line from Waterford today that they'll probably just be able to hit it wherever they can. But maybe Brendan's puck outs, you mightn't see too many of them landing into that zone, you know. Tell me, sounds concerned from a, a temporary point of view, and yet they're the big favourites for, for today. What is the confidence like in Waterford? Ah, uh, well, like you mean, Waterford people, you know, they're coming in as monster champions, you know. So I don't understand really why Tipperary are, are such strong favourites. You know, Waterford have very good players. You know, obviously John Milan is delivering every day he goes out. Owen Kelly has been very good from play, but I think you know. It's the other players today, like what well, Steve Malumphy has been working hard today, or so far this year, but I think you'll have to chip in today with a few scores. But, you know, Waterford are playing with great confidence, and, you know, they're not conceding many scores, so, you know, the people in Waterford just hope they get another crack at Kenny. I bet they do. In a word, who win? I think Tip will win. Paul? Obviously Waterford, um, but I think it's going to be very close. As if we expected them to say anything different as we hand off to Marty Morrissey.
Thank you very much, Joanne. It's a repeat of last year's Munster Hurling final, which Tipperary won by four points. A year earlier, in 2008, they met here in Croke Park again in another All-Ireland semi-final, which Waterford won by two. Last March, they met in the league, and guess what? It finished level. This is very much a 50-50 game. Let's take a closer look at the Waterford team. For the last five years, Art Moore's Clinton Hennessy has been first choice for the Dacies. He's 33, six foot one, and has grown in stature over the last season or two. The performance of Liam Lawler at fullback could be crucial this afternoon and how he deals with Tipperary's own Kelly. He's fortunate to have two fine cornerbacks beside him in Owen Murphy and Noel Connors. Michael Brick Walsh has been outstanding at centre back in the Munster Championship and Tipperary must have a game plan to counteract his dominance. Tony Brown is playing like 27, not 37 years of age, while Declan Prendergast has been rocked. Donald Grady, your thoughts? Well, I suppose really looking at the war of a team, the main man, uh, uh, like, uh, if we look at the Munster campaign, was Michael Brick Walsh, and uh, you know, he's a very, very influential player. And if Tip hope to win this match, they'll have to get around him somewhere. I, I'm expecting to play a, a bit of short ball, pull him out of the, the uh, central position a little bit, and then create channels for their runners in behind. But uh, he's a huge player, and he has been very influential for War of the now. This is the 39. Oh, the Tipperary up front are very, very good, but I think they'll have a little bit of concern maybe about over their full back line against Galway. And uh, I think that one of the main men is Paul Curran today. And I think that uh, Waterford will probably play young um, O'Halloran in on him and try and run him about the place. But, um, you know, Paul Curran is a very, very experienced player and I'm expecting a big game from him. He has plenty of pace, he has plenty of experience, and I think that he'll show up to the defence today. Well, Tipperary and Waterford have met 38 times. Tipperary won 20. Feel the Valley Gunnerman. Sure. Yes, in the, in the final, I suppose. You know, a lot has been made about the changes in, in Tipperary team, but Tipperary have the very same personnel in defence and in midfield as they had against Cork. Brendan Maher and Shane McGrath have formed a great midfield partnership. Now, if if Waterford had to break even, even break even here at, at midfield, this is man is going to be vital, Shane O'Sullivan. He's a he, he has been a phenomenal in a phenomenal form this year. A very good year. Both in yeah. linking up with, with uh, the, the defence with, with, with the forwards, in winning hard ball in the middle of the field, and in scoring. Mm. You know, so he's he's in top form, but he will need to be in the, today because there'll be a massive battle today. It'll be very crowded between the two 50 yard lines. There'll be a huge battle there, and the one attribute he will need is to be able to win that hard ball. You know, all the crowd in this air, come out like your kiddie lads do, win the ball and deliver it into the forward line. And of course, we've been talking about there's so much speculation of the role that this sub that they've brought on late into the game, Brian O'Halloran for Waterford, is going to make. As they said in the commentary there, young lad waiting for his leaving search results. We wish him well, but today is another big test. Yeah, like everyone's wondering where he's going to play, but no one fits, he'd give him a kind of a running role. He's coming in from playing central forward last year. He's on a very good Waterford minor team last year. Now, he, they've been talking about him and Walford all year that he's so good and playing so well and he was introduced against Cork scored a point and taken off it's a big ask from today but you'll probably find that as Jerry said he'd come from deep and use his skill and kind of pace but it's still a big ask because the tip backs goalie and midfielder are the exact same and I don't expect tip to move out today like Cork did against Walford they'll hold back as well mm -hmm. and there will be a lot of crowd in the midfield it's going to be a hard one but I could be interested to see where he plays and how he does and like we'd like to wish him well because it is a very very big ask for a young fella oh, there's no doubt about that uh, we looked at Stephen Malumphy a little bit earlier on Ger. Um, um, no, the man who's going to have his jersey in his face all day. Yes, without a doubt. And Malumphy's been, been so industrious, such a hard worker, moving all over the field. Is a man going to hold the centre or is he going to follow him? You know, he hasn't been in the greatest form this no. year. In fact, I think Parit Maher is a much better. He's an out and out centre player. Right? Well, I don't know, well, I don't that, know that, why. That could be a decision that yeah. could be made very, very quickly because yeah. Conor Manning was taken off against Cork in, in, in the most championship match. Not yeah. back to the form that no. we've seen as no, a central no. position. And you're normally yeah. number six, you want your best man commanding there. So, I mean, it is a, a switch that's set. As well no? as that, Maher seems to be as an out and out yeah. centre player. Yeah. You know, yeah. The ball, win yeah. the ball. He yeah. was brilliant to get there against mm. there in and but, mm -hmm. and but but Homani is a, a good cover on both sides. Yeah. is very good. But on the big day, and and is good. Big day, he's mm. good. The big day. Yeah. And the other big question: Owen Kelly carry a little bit of a back injury, you know? Yeah, I mean, all the speculation all week was that Owen Kelly had suffered a back injury that he's had over that has played him over the last couple of seasons, and like he's captain of the team, big undertaking for him at, at the edge of the square today, and that like himself and Noel McGrath maybe need certainly need to beat up the performance considerably, yeah. you know. And I mean, um, you're talking about back injuries, Michael. I mean, does the man alongside me? I thought <laughs> all the speculation <laughs> about <laughs> Owen Kelly this week was it rolling in the hair? No, or it was it rolling in the hair or bailing here? You are certainly, is it? You know, so. Um, 
I mean, if you're rolling in the hair, you're a better man than I thought, so I must say, you know. All right, that's but but he's, he's, he's own Kenny as well. He's yes. Not, not, not a great Munster final, could have won it in normal time. He's a Crow Car player. He strikes, he, oh, yeah. he plays very well in Crow Car. So, and you know, he's, on, he's on a new guy, Liam Lawler. It's, exactly. Quick question exactly. about that to help him. Yeah. It's very vital. All Kenny could beat Liam Lawler. That's a big, big tussle. Almost time for the action. Very, very quick pr prediction. Who's going to win, sir? I expect Tip just to get through. Tip, sir? Yeah, I'll go with Tip as well. Two tips. Tip Listen, it's a toss of a kind, Mike, between, between these two. The only thing I'll say is Tip played their best hurling in Crow Park. Warren would have yes to play their best hurling in Crow Park. On that basis, I go for Tip. Okay. Here's open for Crystal Ireland semi final. He's on the intercounty panel for the last 15 years. It's a big day for him. It's a big day for Tipperary and Waterford. Waterford won the toss, playing from left to right. Going through the middle, Shane McGrath, starting brightly. Collingford is Noel McGrath, gives it outside. Here's the first opportunity, and the ball is wide. The role of Shane McGrath is vital, really, because he was tried out at centre forward against uh, Offaly and Galway. The plan didn't really work. As no. he said himself, his mother even said that he shouldn't be playing centre yeah, forward. He's a more natural <laughs> midfielder, and, and we saw him there. That's his role, running with the ball through, and uh, bad miss by John O'Brien to start off. We see how the tactics develop. Going through the middle, Richie Foley, the monster champions, are on their way. Good start for the Abbey side back. Puck out straight down the middle there, Marty, which was run the break by Richie Ford, and he took a good score. And, um, you know, Waterford, I think, are playing with whatever breeze is there. Uh, they won the toss, as you said, and, um, you know, I think the first 10 minutes are vital, but Noel McGrath has come out from the corner, and he's operating at centre-forward on Brick Walsh. And a lot will depend on what ball he gets from his midfielders and his half-backs. If they play it short, he can allow to run or take long-range scores. You can see Brendan Cummins in his very first puck out. It was tactical to find a man, not to rain it down on Brick Walsh the significant factor first touch for Clinton Hennessy into the middle where Brendan Marr is operating working hard Torig Marr no relation, different glove the road run played splendidly in the All-Ireland quarter final scoring a goal and uh, two points I'm afraid he has yet to score here you know when, you, when you're going up the left hand side early in the game you know, I try and pull it into Lark Corbett or try and push it into Owen Kelly who's operating right corner forward good interception here by Patrick Marr from Laura and Dara the ball again is wide it's uh, three wides chances all missed Hennessy goes for distance in his puck out. Richie Foley was running onto it, but it didn't quite go into his possession. Too many steps for Shane O'Sullivan. Free to Tipperary. Well, Mark, you'd be expecting Tipperary to pepper in the ball to um, Lark Corbett, who's operating foot forward on Liam Lawler. Cork never really asked him questions, and um, they should be trying to do that to run him through the wall for full back. Then. Good anticipation by Owen Murphy. To scramble far as Shane O'Sullivan, Ali Gunnerman. Nice pick up here by Noel McGrath. 19 year old, not 20 until December. Is this the first score for the Premier County? Wonderful play. Hard to imagine he's only in his second championship season. And the Lockmore Castellani is a very special talent. A good block down there by Brendan Maram from the resultant break. Noel McGrath, very clever player, and does the right thing, just slips it over the bar near the end, but he'll trouble Brick Walsh, uh, Marty, if he gets uh, enough of the ball. Gathered here by Shane Walsh. He's come out around the half-forward line. Brendan Cummins has to be alert and assertive. Get it out to a defender. Send long. Oh, lovely layoff by Lara Corbett to John O'Brien to score the match so far what a layoff by Corbett great finish by John O'Brien the first touch excellent finish equally impressive coming across here is Torek Bar Declan Fanny from Killinor in his 29th championship appearance today here's the brick He's fouled. 
And you can see Tipperary were swarming around the Stradbally hurler and indeed footballer. Yeah, great catch there by Michael Walsh, but that's the one ball that Tipperary should be delivering out of the defence, Marty. Like long high ball up in the air, Brick Walsh is going to win those every time. That ball should be slipped down the wing to Gerald Ryan and uh, down into Owen Kelly's corner, so mistake by Tip there. Owen Kelly. Really top-class free taker. Scored a goal and 22 points in three championship games. That's his first in this All-Ireland semi-final. Level for the second time. Brendan Cummins doing what Donald Old uh, Cusick started many seasons ago. And again, you can see the plan is to bypass Brick Watch, who's been dominant at centre back. Here he is in the thick of it. Layoff is back by Noel McGrath. Dead straight in front of the pulse. It's another point for Tipperary. Won an All Ireland minor medal in 2006 2007. And he really is a player for the future. Yeah, I love the little pop pass there in Norman Grass, shortening up the stick again and just knocking it over the bar. Two excellent scores from him so far. Working hard is Stephen Malumphy. Comes to the All Star full back. 2007, Declan Fan played football against Donny Gaul in a qualifier here seven years ago. You can see the touch. Causing problems, Patrick Maher. Chased by two Waterford defenders, and he let it off. Kenton Hennessy, somebody blocked it, looked like Hennessy. Owen Murphy is back there. Lark Corbett almost has it. Waterford under the cosh a little bit. There was a chop down. The referee is signaling off camera. So that is a free out for the Dishes. But anxious, nervous moments in the Waterford defence. We we'll have a look at Patrick Maher going through there. It was very unlucky. Went to his, should have got to his feet maybe when he fell, tried to hit it from the ground. It was blocked. And subsequently, um, Waterford got the free out. Free taken by Hennessy. Shane O'Sullivan is coming from centre field to help out his half forward line. Diagonal ball across. It's a good one to John Millard. Chasing after him, Paddy Stapleton. Millard turns, salutes the Cusick stand. He is at times unmarkable. What Gooch Cooper is to carry football. John Milan is to Waterford Hurling. Yeah, and Tipperary's Paddy Stapleton has come over to mark the uh, man mark Milan, but you know, this fellow's excellent. And you know, you'd be happy enough if you were the opposing manager if he was sticking three or four balls over the bar because you'd have to give him that he's going to win those type of balls all the time. That's his 11th point in the championship. Brick Watch lays it off. Declan Prendergast goes long. Nice touchdown as Waterford try and open up this temporary defence. Horig Mar looks solid at left half back. Captain of the Tipperary under 21 team that will face Antra next Saturday in Tullamore. Lark Corbett. Effort blocked this time by Tony Brown. Hear the roar when he gets the ball and when he clears it with the hurling. He'll be more impressive the next time, I can assure you. Look at Shane O'Sullivan. They're geared up for this one, there is no doubt about it. There's an awful lot of stake over the next 66 minutes or so, 62 minutes. Well, Shane O'Sullivan being held there, and the midfield battle is going to be crucial, Marty. Um, Shane O'Sullivan and Richie Foley for Waterford against Shane McGrath and Brendan Maher. That's a crucial battle there. Owen Kelly props this in. Batted out for Conor O'Mahony. Here's a back for his Declan Fanning. Half back line, helping out the full back line. Got it down again for his Garold Ryan, who's now back in his customary position of right out forward. With him is Brick Walsh. Coming in at the two number nines, that's Shane McGrath and Richie Foley. It's going to be a throw ball. Well, Waterford are under a little bit of pressure when Tip run at them, and uh, I'm surprised by Declan Fanning hit a, a longish ball there again instead of trying to angle it out to, to you know, open out the play a bit and get uh, Tip running at the Waterford defence. Shane McGrath doing well. Declan Prendergast pulls in the first time. Goes off. Playing in his 10th championship match. It's not a good one. Sent down the field long. Down towards Shane Walsh. Tenacious play by Paul Curran. 
Good calling in the middle by John O'Brien. Great block down by Richie Foley. Sends it out the wing. There's nobody there except Declan Fanning. Oh, high challenge by John Milan. And the referee blows his whistle correctly. Could mean that John Milan will be on a yellow card, which is a very soft, if you know what I mean, yellow card to give away for him. Yeah, no real need for it, Marty Ball out in the sideline, but um, as we predicted before the game, Brian O'Halloran is in full forward and tried to run Paul Curtin, but Paul Curtin has won that first battle and needless yellow card, as you said there, for John Milan. No danger there, no, nothing, there, and he's under pressure now for the rest of the game. Newport's Conor O'Mahony. Back out first, Shane McGrath. Two of the close buddies, actually, on the team, McGrath and Milan. Great catch by Richie Foley. He's helping on his defence. First time fall. Sends it long from Declan Fanny. Breaking ball coming across. It's Brian O'Halloran. There's a water from man on the deck. Paul Kern goes long again. Pull in the air. Chasing after it is Noel Connors. Is that a foul? The referee seems to agree. Owen Kelly, the guilty party on this occasion. 26 year old for Waterford. Made his first appearance against Cork here in Cook Park. Great feeling by Paul Kern. It's two balls in a row he's won. One that he had to run on to, one he had to catch. That gives any fullback great confidence. Declan uh, Prendergast. Tabrary regain it. Here's Noel McGrath. They're queuing to his right. He goes for the score. He's confident enough. Having already done it twice already. That's three points for Noel McGrath. When you consider it that he only scored five points in the championship campaign coming into this All-Ireland semi-final. He started very brightly. Excellent score again, Marty. But it, it was a tactic, really. You know, bring a player who can score from out the field, out to Brick Walsh, pop it short to him, and if he does the business well, Brick Walsh is under pressure then. And uh, you could see earlier on, now it hasn't happened for... Definitely yellow card for Noel. Here come Waterford now. Here's Kevin Moore. Dallas Alma. That's a beautiful score. You couldn't ask for better. He's a man who can play anywhere, whether it's defence or midfield, or indeed in his new role of right half forward. Good score. Level for the fourth time in this semi-final. Working Michael Brickwatch. Yeah, Puck out that came straight down the, you know, down his throw really, and Brickwatch will feel those all day and won the ball and was, was fouled. That's the second free and an opportunity now for Owen Kelly to put uh, Waterford ahead. But Water, uh, Tipper playing well enough for probably have a shading it up to now, even though it's all uh, level, but they'll have to cut out these silly frees. Here's Owen Kelly. Miscued that one completely. That's the first wide of the game for Waterford after 14 minutes of play. Watch Brendan Cummins. Gent is a quick one. Goes long from Porig Mar. Great catch, Tony Brown. Under severe pressure, particularly from Patrick Mar. Going through the middle. Center half forward subsequently fouled. More for players are protesting for what reason? Tony doesn't understand it. John Sexton explains. First chance for Owen Kelly to put his name. This is Owen Kelly Tipperary, I mean, to put his name on the score sheet. Goal and 33 points in the campaign so far. 22 frees, 565s. First point in the All-Ireland semi-final. Was well, this a free done? Well, Tip put enormous pressure on Tony Brown, and he, I thought he held it a little bit long, but um, when he tried to get rid of it, Patrick Marr, a slight push in the back there, right, but John Sexton's very hard on these. Conor O'Mahony is on the ground. 
I know Halloran is there. He's going to be wearing 27, as you'll see him later as well, because, of course, he's the late replacement for Seamus Prendergast. Here's Richie Foley. Loses possession. John Millar picked up a knock in the process of trying to gather possession. Sent long by Mullen Holmes, Paul Kern in his 32nd championship match appearance today. Noel Connors escorts it out over the side. Noel Connors thought it was going to be a Waterford ball. Let's see what happened here. John Milan coming out. Got it on the hands, the fingers. Well, I think he got three taps there, Marty, but uh, the referee was behind him. There were li little taps, but they put him off and he got a kick in the fingers. Shane O'Sullivan really has blossomed. Here comes Milan. Here comes the score. Second of the afternoon. Both of them from play. 29 years of age, John Milan from the De La Salle Club. He really has a wonderful array of skills. Level for the fifth time. Ball down again to Milan. Lovely stick work. Gets it up first time. Drops this one in. It's one against one. And once more, it's Paul Kerr. Declan Fanning. Nice little jink in the turn. Makes the space. Hits it with the left side. Down towards the half forward line. It's working hard. It's been an area of concern for Tipperary through this championship campaign. Ball in towards... Owen Kemp gets his first real touch in play after 17 and a half minutes. And when he gets it, he overcarries, and it's a free out for the Munster champions. He won't be pleased. Tony Brown is going to take this. And there is a light breeze, isn't there, Donald, favouring Waterford in this first half? Well, uh, I was down pitch side earlier on, and it didn't, it didn't seem to influence much. It's, it's much windier up here, Martin. When you look at the flags, sometimes they're blowing strenuously, and other times they're dead. But it seems to be favouring Waterford. Tony Brown with the free. Knocked away this time by Paddy Stapleton. To Declan Fanning. To Shane McGrath. Long ball up towards Lark Corbett and Owen Kelly. John O'Brien is in there as well. Here comes Noel Connors. Passage man. Waterford minor two years ago. Fully fledged senior at this stage. Breaking ball, Stephen Malumphy, captain. Working, trying to get it up. Here comes Rick Walsh yet again. Sends it low. He heard the call, and it was a good call from the man who's waiting for his leaving side results. Brian O'Halloran, good block down as well. Superb play. In comes Shane McGrath. O'Halloran tries to retrieve the situation, but he overdoes it. Fouls the ball on a hinchman, and that means a free for the Premier County. Well, tackled by Brian Halloran, an inexperienced. No need to foul him, really. He was under pressure, but a definite free. And uh, Shane McGrath all fired up. Owen Kelly was in full forward for a little while, but I think that's just the way it was. He's gone back out now to left half forward, and Brian Halloran has gone back in. All star centre back 2008, Conor O'Mahony. Against the summer breeze. John O'Brien now covered the ball in there. And so too is Noel Connors. To his captain, the army man, Stephen Malumphy. Diagonal ball is aimed over towards Brian O'Halloran. Great work by Paul Kirk. That's at least four balls in a row that he's won in straight tussles. Out to Shane McGrath in a lot of space. He steadies. He's going to have a go and he's going to be successful. First point in the All-Ireland semi-final, all-star midfielder from last year. Given a lot of space, he created it for himself, took the couple of strides, and then shot a great score. That's as far to Marty, really. Shane O'Sullivan and Torrig Mark. 20 years of age, Mark. He's a good hurler. Saw him play against Clare in the under-21 final in Thurles. And on a wonderful performance. Noel McGrath, John O'Brien, Tumi Barr represented here and they know they're hurling in Tumivara great score easy enough from a Tipperary perspective and worrying from a Waterford viewpoint
chance here, which is sent wide. There may well be a change in the Waterford team, and I believe that Seamus Prendergast might be coming on. The young lad who was uh, making his first start, that's Brian O'Halloran. That's after 20 minutes of play, a change in the Waterford game plan. But I think, Donald, if I'm correct, it has a lot to do with the dominance of Paul Kern. Well, I would think so. It's very seldom, Marty, that these uh, moves work, you know, that, uh, you know, you introduce a young lad in, and I think Paul Flynn said it before the game that, you know, there's uh, a big question mark over these, and if it works, it's brilliant, and, uh, but seldom do they work, and uh, Paul Curran really had a stormer up to now. It must be said that maybe the ball wasn't dangling shortly, but what I can't understand is, instead of feeding Brian O'Halloran, why didn't feed John Milan? He's the main go-to man, so to speak, and every ball you get should be hit into his corner. Very tough and young Brian O'Halloran, but perhaps uh, Waterford should have gone for the experience of either Seamus Brendergast or Ken McGrath to start. Considering the uh, best option, but that might be the gift of hindsight as well. But uh, young O'Halloran is a player you're going to hear a lot more about. Clinton Hennessy getting involved. Goals for distance. Once again, it's Shane McGrath beating. Much taller man than Seamus Brendergast. Here's Tony Brown. Goes long. Declan Fanning. Torig Mark. Dropping it back down towards Liam Lawler. Mark Forbert is in. And then it's Corbett. Straight one to one battle. They were bypassing the brick. They were aiming for the long ball to test out perhaps a perceived weakness in the water for defence in Liam Lawler. Here comes the long ball. It was a game plan that was always in the offering. Up goes Corbett, and he gave Clinton Hennessy no chance. Well, that's what he's good at. He just stands behind the player each time, Marty, and once he gets a break like that, he's on his game and they're uh, stuck it in the back of the net. First real break coming after 22 minutes. And Waterford respond. Brendan Cummins got a little touch. First touch by Owen Kelly wasn't great. Didn't come up right for him. Stephen Malumpy. Waterford have to show their character now by responding. Hefty challenge. Hefty challenge on Paul Curran. That rattled the cage from Seamus Prendergast. And I'm pretty sure there were instructions to make your presence felt. And Paul Curran felt the pain. But the, the Tipperary defence is playing very, very well, Marty, and, uh, you know, the, the first 20 minutes was gave him great confidence, so difficult for Prendergast now who's just coming to the game. Loose ball again, picked up by Tipperary. Owen Kelly, sniffing around. So too is good old Ryan. Could be an easy ball for Clinton Hennessy. Two Waterford players available. Clinton uh, goes for a little run first for uh, leaving it down towards James Prendergast. John Milan, twisting and turning. Referee spotted the foul, and John Sexton immediately blew his whistle. Paddy Stapleton is protesting his innocence, but it'll be all to no avail because John Sexton has made up his mind, and it was instinctive. There's the explanation. I think he's now realized that John Sexton is not for changing. Yellow card for the right corner back from Boris Uli. And John Milan has a sore ear after it all. Oh, now the two players, sorry, the two players who are marking each other, both Paddy Stapleton and John Milan, are both on yellow. But you would have to say that Milan is winning that battle, whereas Paul Curran is winning the other battle, right? Milan is winning that battle, so really Walter should target that corner as much as they can. Owen Kelly with the free. And Kelly with the point. Won an All-Star in his very first season eight years ago. And he's still producing magic. Tony Brown tries to knock it down for Shane O'Sullivan. Patrick Marr was fouled. It was a push in the back. 
Well, lots of referees will these go, but uh, John Sexton has been very hard on him, and that, that is a foul, Marty, but uh, John Sexton has been consistent. He's blowing up for pushes in the back for hurlers coming across, and um, once he's consistent on both sides, I don't think anybody got enough free now, Marty, into the wind, and, um, you know, if he gets this, it will be a massive score for Tip. Quite there. Fact, it's wide. I don't know whether I'm right or not, Donald, but it's just looking at the flags on the pitch, it seems to be increasing in intensity in favour of Waterford. Tuck out, down to Shane O'Sullivan. Great catch this time by Brendan Ma. Another one of the under 21s. Quick ball in. Great hands by John O'Brien. He's now operating at Top of the right, and he gets his third point of the game. Nothing wrong with the uh, Tipperary forward line. Good chance there. I think he waited for a second for Lar Corbett to break the line, but Lar didn't do it. If he did, they could have been in for another goal. Response by Waterford is pretty impressive. Seamus Prendergast proves his value. Now the Tipperary's 1-8 by the way, 1-7 now coming from play. Here's Prendergast's point. Four points between the teams. The red block down again. Shane O'Sullivan calls for it. Dropping it in and nobody can reach it. A little bit of afters here between Paul Curran and Owen Kelly. And Brendan Cummins is trying to uh, act the peacemaker. A bit of afters that is totally unnecessary because it's been played in a very sporting fashion so far. Davy Fitz, manager of Waterford for two years and two months now. John Sexton gives both players a little finger wagging. So let's pop on. And once again, it's the quick puck out and Waterford haven't actually popped on to this tactic at all. They're waiting for the long ball and it's not happening. And from a Tipperary perspective, it's uh, a plan that's working well. Lark Corbett, not a great hand pass. Couldn't it still work out for them? Not quite. Here's the break. Shane O'Sullivan has to go back and help the half back line and full back line. Shane Walsh got a touch to it. Once again, it's Torek Maher, who gets a touch to it this time. All-Ireland minor medalists, two years in a row. Left corner back, fifth championship match. It's a good one. Owen Kelly somehow managed to gather it. Gives it back to Shane McGrath, gets by the initial challenge. And the second, Shane O'Sullivan. Man inside is available as Patrick Maher. With good anticipation, good calling. Read it well. Declan Prendergast. Leaving behind him, Kevin Moore finds Seamus Prendergast from just inside the Tipperary half of the field. He knows himself. Judging by the body language, it wasn't his best effort. Well won. Four wides for Waterford, four wides for Tipperary, but much more importantly, Tipperary got that first goal from Lar Corbett. Puck out by Brendan Cummins this time is quite long. And surprise, surprise. He gathers it. The brick watch. And one man they're trying to avoid. Declan Prendergast sends it down that way. Seamus Prendergast was, or rather, John Milan was being fouled. The referee John Sexton immediately blew his whistle. And there's another opportunity for Owen Kelly to add to his tally of two points. That was a lovely ball there from Declan Prendergast, straight down to, you know, the type of forward needs. But incidentally, Marty, and just looking at the stats there, um, that was the third puck out. I should uh, concentrate on those short puck outs, uh, Tipperary, because they are working. Well, at least they're now, they are working. That effort by Owen Kelly, just by the umpire to be over the bar. That's his third of the game. There's the short puck out. Very poor marking by the Waterford full forward line. At this stage, everybody should have got onto it. Noel McGrath, nice stick work to keep the ball in play. 
getting inside the cover. Going back is Rick Walsh. Foley. Two against one here. And it's Milan, and there's a high challenge for Milan again. Play continues on. Referee, I thought, had blown his whistle, so did Milan. And the referee is going to have to sort this one out. There's a temporary man down injured, as you can see. Looks like Shane McGrath is calling for attention for his colleague, who happens to be Declan Fanning. But the uh, referee might have a word with the linesman for some more detailed information. Cahill McAllister and uh, Anthony Stapleton are the two linesmen today. Let's see how all this develops. Yeah, well, the ball went off the Tipperary defenders, Paddy Stapleton, and he just um, put the hurley across John Milan there and just won the ball. Don't think there was that too much in it, really. I think John Milan was uh, looking for the foul there, and we'd see coming in, oh, there's just a bit of a ruck, and yeah, coming right in there, one of the water players. Uh, not quite sure who it was, but. Um, Probably fouled the um, Tipperary man. Tipperary probably deserved a free there, but the referee was caught and couldn't really see. No public warnings issued. Lark Corbett lays it off quickly. Ball inside towards Patrick Marr. Back by his goal, McGrath. Going for his fourth point of the match. It's impressive play by the Tipperary attack. Set up this time by Boris Ali's Brendan Ma. <laughs> Referee John Sexton again has blown his whistle because immediately that puck out, Brendan Ma was involved, which something obviously the referee spotted, and it looks like that's going to be a yellow card for the midfielder. There it is. <laughs> Declan Fanning is back on the field. David Young is making his way off camera. That ball is going wide. Disappointment for the Dacies. We well, really spoke over the short puck outs there from Tip. I think Waterford are allowing the Tip Ray to hit short puck outs and then they're trying to uh, battle for them further up the field. Here comes Brendan Mark. Coming straight through the middle. Kevin Moore is back there. Helping out his defence. Tony Brown lays it off. It's a poor pass. Shane McGrath easily intercepts. Surrounded by Prendergast and Tony Brown. Out for his own Kelly. Can he score from there? Yes, he can. Second point for own Kelly. First from play. It's a ball that Waterford should have cleared. Tony Brown's pass intercepted rather easily, and it ended with Owen Kelly's point. Tenacious work by the left corner back from Thurla Sarsfields, Michael Cahill. Getting a congratulations from Porig Ma. Two club mates, two temporary men. One minute of additional time added on as Owen Kelly has a right good lash but I'm afraid it's left and wide five wides for Tipperary but they lead by five it would appear as we head into the break still about 30 seconds left in this first half long ball again Patrick Maher underneath it here comes the goal scorer it's Lar Corbett trouble for Waterford steadies, lobs and scores. That's a goal and a point for Lar Corbett. And a six point cushion for the Premier County. Obviously considered going forward, but uh, thought taking the point was the right option. And it was. Glorious sunshine in Cold Park. It's been a most interesting first half with tactical games from a defensive viewpoint from Tipperary working well with the short puck outs. Shane McGrath has been a dominant force at midfield and has been quite influential, although only scoring one point. John Milan at the other end has scored twice but has picked up a yellow card. 
but the most important I score, of course, you. came after. The Muscle Champions do have a problem. It's Tip will be favourites at this stage. Yeah, Tip will be favourites, and they're playing with Michael as well. You have to give him credit, and I think tactically they've done brilliantly as well. You know, I think placing Norm McGrath centre forward has been a master stroke by them, and defensively they've been very good as well, particularly at number three and number six as well. And like it's it's caused a serious problem for Waterford now on the on the base of holding two inside. You saw there are stages in the first half. The whole half back line were on their own, and ball was coming back up the field, and they were picking it up on their own as well. And that's a big issue for Waterford now. Six points behind, they've got to go chase the game now, so they've got to revert maybe back to having three full forward forwards inside there and putting a lot more ball into, into John Milan as well because in fairness to Brian O'Halloran I mean he was only a youngster coming onto the team but a lot of the ball went down the top of him and yeah, he kept yeah, the ball away from, yeah. from John Milan you know yeah. it showed when John Milan got on the ball he is that serious threat but it's an uphill battle for Waterford at the moment. Okay it is we're going to take a short break for the reflection. Backs, Paddy Stable especially and they're walking down down the channels and bypassing Brick Welch and you have Noel McGrath in picking up the loose ball now Brick is having a good game but this young Noel McGrath has got uh, four points mm. from play like mm. so you'd have to say the Waterford forwards are, are the tip forwards are going very well the Walford to me will have to go back to an orthodox game because they're down to six points now they'll have to go chasing you can't go defend them when you're down to six points they'll have to go for broke and like kind of throw caution to the wind like they're trying to be very defensively it's okay but like just tip forwards like they are throwing the ball around and are well on top you said this wouldn't work here it, it, it was never going to work today Michael because yeah. we, Tipperary had a chance to study this tactic and it, you know we were all talking about before the game yeah. how are you going to get past Big Welsh so what the Walford do they hand, them the, they hand them the formula on how to get past Big Welsh, you know. We draw your two corner forwards so that Cummins can poke the ball to the cornerback. Cornerback runs to the 40-yard line and now he drops yeah, the ball yeah. right in yeah. behind Big Welsh. It was crazy. Now, it's not over yet for Waterford. Mm. They've got to say, right, it didn't work. Brian Holland didn't work. That didn't work. Now, let's go back to the 15 against 15. Let's go back to getting ball into Milan inside mm. in the full forward line with our three full forward lines inside and let's force Cummins mm. to poke the ball out. Mm. You know, yeah. to mm. poke the ball mm. along. Give, yeah. him, give him no alternative. If they don't do that, Tip will clean them out. Some of those balls that were being dropped in, Tomas, uh, into that Waterford defence, we said one of, the, one of them would eventually break and it did, and our corporate was there. Yeah, and at times you were saying, why, why, why didn't they put him out to the corners and maybe get the runners on him and stuff like that as well? But look again, look, there's nobody on Patrick Maher here, right? He has all the time to work. He hit a long clearance, and look, there's no better man in the game than the ball coming in at the edge of the square than Lauren. He's proved it so many times in the past. When, when the need is the greatest on the greatest stage in Crow Park, he wasn't yeah, actually it, playing it, that it, well up to that. He right? wasn't playing up to that, that well up to that. But he's a natural instinct, he's mm. a natural horror, he's a natural goal scorer. Yeah. And look, we saw the last day against Galway, he comes up with a winning point. He comes up with a goal here in the match, right? I mean, they need to keep him in the game, though, all the time because he is the man that makes them take up over there with no yeah, yeah, throwing yeah. hand passes around and obviously getting scores and, and it's not that the full, full back line no. were playing badly. They were playing really well. Yes, really they were. Well. Yeah. We were just, yeah. we were just yeah. after saying, yeah. Yeah. listen, they're going to make a mistake. Yeah. So their ball yeah. is going to break mm -hmm. here. And just mm -hmm. as it happened, ball was hit. They, they had held out really well, but when so much ball is coming in, eventually one chance comes and no better man than Lard to put it away. Well, that's a bit of opportunism by Lark Corbett, who was brilliant at that kind of stuff. But, I mean, the man, man as we said a moment ago, who really benefited from the way things were playing out was Noel McGrath. Uh, yeah, well, a young fellow, really, but a great horror. Mm. Came from the minor. This fellow is a good horror. They switched him in centre forward, and it's a big ass. But once he gets on the ball, ball dropped down here. He has so much skill, he's a natural. Picks it up, has a little look around, touch in his back, touch to He has left or right leg, does the right leg here, and in short grip, flicks it overhead. Now, he's doing this all day. Now, Brick Welch is playing well enough, but any chance that he gets, he's going to score it. Again, is John O'Brien has a little flick back. Again, bang, just flick of the wrist. You think he's going to be hooked or blocked down? No chance to see flick. And again, here again, like he's having a dream first half. Now, this Noel Connors is playing very well. Again, this ball breaks here, thrown out here to McGrath. Once he has the side, go back again, left or right, back on his right this time over there. He is the two but sides. He's let everybody else do the donkey work for him. Patrick no. Maher yeah. and, and all these fellas, but let them go in and tackle, yeah. let them go into brick well, wash, let them throw on the shoulder, but and let him take the flick. That's the exactly, pass you're, you're, you're spot on. That's exactly Tiberelli's tactics today. Get in Patrick Maher, get in. The, the ball breakers inside yeah, yeah. and let mm. him win the ball and pass it back not mm. forward yeah. mm. and next thing the man is back Owen Kelly was back there as well but he got a point yeah. the very same yeah. way mm. have the man placed on the 50 yard line straight shot over the bar well when you have target shooters in the team like that then why not do that up front for Waterford once again John Milan has carried the, the burden for most of it yeah and, and I mean he's been he's been well marshaled I suppose as well but look I mean he's a fantastic performer and, and like he's the man that's if they're going to get back into this game he's the man that's going to bring it forward from as well you know and look he's We've seen this so many times, so many years and stuff like that as well. But again, he's probably, he's up there on his own. He's leading kind of a, a lonely life above there at the moment, you know. And he's living on he crumbs. He's leading on crumbs, you know, yeah. and he needs to get a bit more support. I mean, this is coming away out the feed. And 
this is their fantastic scores and their inspiration scores and like he is on his game and when yeah. he's on his game you must give him possession you must give him ball and I mean that's something that Waterford will have to address him Sir mentioned Big Dan will have to come on because OK might be pushing on but he's very strong around I that presume that'll be the plan they'll have to because like they need a goal or two to get back into this game six points down the points that are getting for play OK but Tipper are good enough to go on and, and get points but as we, well. we, we've seen Waterford though Michael so many times in the past being in this position right and yes. I mean mm. he came with a game plan to actually hold Tipperary for as long as he could yeah. he's got to change that now right but we've seen them we've seen them play with a freedom and getting scores from every angle and stuff and they need to go back to that now at this stage they need to start getting runners at the Tipperary full back line that we said it's uh, Clark Clark in the second uh, All-Ireland semi-final Tipperary looks to have well the advantage substantially not just in terms of the scoring board which is the most important area but just in the overall trend and play of the game as well can Waterford change it Will they bring in Dan the Man? These boys uh, have come through a fairly tough Munster Championship campaign. This is the first real time that they're having to chase big time. Tony Brown will lead the way for the first of the scores of the second half and his first point in this particular game. And the quick puck out. It's happening all day. And Waterford are not able to just counteract it. Here's Paddy Stapleton. 25 years of age since last Friday. Shane McGrath hits it and he knew immediately himself it was well won. Uh, normally he's very active from those, but it went le left and wide. And he also knows that Lark Corbett is playing up really out and left half forward over to the early. Connor O'Mahony has the slipper. And see that for passion. This is his 48th championship match for Tipperary. And in his nine year career, he scored 15 goals and 316 points. Will he add to his tally here? It's tailing well, right, and wide. So now, let's see what Waterford. Monster champions are made of. Clinton Hennessy goes for distance. Up towards Big Seamus Prendergast. He's made an impression since introduced. Flicks one forward for John Moran. The two Waterford lads combine alive, rather. That's Kevin Moore and two club mates as well. And John Moran. Man still holding the side of his head. As Tipperary go forward. Liam Lawler in a race for possession. Latching on to it has got old Ryan. Challenge was an illegal one. And Noel Connors. Free out for the Dacians. Well, got old Ryan very unlucky there, right? And then, um, you know, just uh, Declan Prendergast in a vital tackle and uh, shoulder by Patrick Maher and uh, John Sexton gives the decision. But replay will show us in time. Yeah. One thing I can't understand, Mark, is why Tipper put giving long range freeze to one Kelly instead of letting Conor Manny hit the man, have a one and one inside with the Mauler. Conor Manny is showing. The sort of form that won him that all-star two years ago. Ball inside for O'Brien coming across as Liam Lawler. He might have to use Clinton Hennessy. Goes down the wing instead. There's a touch that looks to me to be inside the line, but uh, Shane McGrath doesn't quite connect anyway. Now, which way? University College Cork team that won the Fitzgibbon a few seasons ago. It's a good cut too. Paul Curran. Under pressure a little bit from John Millard. Burn gets it out towards left half back, Corey Ma. The only man that has played in every National League, every championship match, every minute of the 2010 season. And Lumpy is getting into it now, and he's fairly well hit before he earned requires a yellow card. Owen Kelly takes the point for the fourth time in this match. So, six points down at the break. A point by Tony Brown, a point by Owen Kelly. Gives them renewed life. Brendan Cummins is looking around for a short puck out. Michael Cahill was making himself available. But Cummins decides to go long. Now, Ludwig Walsh gets. There he is. That's for normal. And away come one. Going long this time to John Malak. Good work again by Paddy Stapleton. 
and celebrate his birthday in style if he gets a place in the All Ireland final. Clinton Hennessy have to come off his goal line. Gives it to Liam Lawler. Has to work himself out of trouble. Nobody there except the road Ryan from Temple Derry. Good interception here and all comics. Pulls the ball away, however. A chance for Tipperary. And John O'Brien puts his name on the score sheet for the fourth time. Well, funny thing, uh, Marky, he should have got the pass from Garo Ryan first of all because the pass into Owen Kelly had been telegraphed and a simple pass back there right to him and he stuck it over the bar. But that's the, from the pressure that uh, Tipper putting on the water for defence. Here's Noel McGrath. Declan Prendergast with him. But overdoing it. Uh, Brian O'Halloran didn't work. Certainly uh, Seamus Prendergast's arrival has helped. But they're still not able to counteract the short puckets. Taking his time. Home cap. There's the end. Here's the shot. And it's going one point in the second half. With eight and a half minutes played, and that came as a result of pressure, admittedly, but a bad pass from Noel Connors. Pulled on first time by Michael Cahill. The road run gets there first. He's hitting one and hitting twice before he goes down. And that's a sideline ball, this time for Waterford. And maybe those sparring sessions that's been going on since Bernard Dunn got involved with uh, Davy Fitz. He's toughening up these Waterford lads because they went in hitting hard and fair and won themselves a valuable possession. Good effort by Richie Foley. It's loose inside there. Stephen Lumphrey is there. More importantly, Prendergast is there. He's uh, pushed off it a little bit. And it's Tipperary to come away with it. Delivering it long. Nice ball inside to Declan Prendergast. John Millar, lovely stick one. Despite Paddy Stapleton right beside him, it's dropping over the bar. Dare I say it, an inspirational move. Because Waterford needed a little bit of leadership. And where better to look than the man with the red helmet, John Millar. Well, the man is operating further out the field now, Marty, and uh, they're hoping to pick up the brakes there and run as a tip defence. Quick puck out again. To Milan. About to be hooked. About to be fouled. By Patrick Barr. Trying to encourage his colleagues to give it everything. And give the 49,754 here in Crook Park, not all of them obviously from Waterford, something to shout about. Referee John Sexton. Shown a yellow card to Patrick Marr, known as the Bonner, after the uh, Bonners from Cashel King Cormac's great uh, Cullum and Cormac. Here's on Kelly. Chance for Kelly. Umpire is going for his flag, and Waterford are back in business. Down six at half time down three ten minutes into the second half and that's six points from uh, place balls marty by waterford and uh tip want to improve the discipline because they're hanging the, the initiative to waterford one signs tony brown not a great pass some other hand pass is going astray lark corbett under pressure has to go back into his own half of the field before he can deliver a pass goes long this time own Kelly with the road run. Declan Prendergast is there. Noel Connors, they're all there. And the referee has said enough is enough. This is going to be a throw ball. Declan Prendergast from Ardmore is seven. The road run from Temple Derry is ten. Throw ball it is. Seamus Prendergast. Got a touch. Tremendous work by Richie Fuller. Liam Lawler to converge on him as quickly as possible. Former Waterford football. Now first team player for the Hurlers. Great catch. Once again, the pass, however, is going astray on both sides. 
as the intensity levels rise. Orn Kelly is in the thick of the action. So too is John Milan with Paddy Stapleton. Look who's trying to hook him, Lara Corbett. Still Stapleton. Back for his uh, summer half forward, Steve Malumpe. Conor O'Mahony. That's out his uh, corner back and delivers it long. Two against two here. Breaking ball favours Waterford and Richie Foley. Steps aside the initial challenge and tries to make a little bit of space. Patrick Maher in hot pursuit. A wall of blue and gold jerseys. Lark Corbett is able to take the hit and delivers it long down towards John O'Brien. Here comes Owen Kelly across, keeping him company Noel Connors. Back there as well as Tony Brown. Connors goes down and Brick Walsh is there observing. Connors goes down, no free, says the referee. Owen Kelly and that's the Brick Walsh. His brother is called Block. This is the Brick. And he gives it out and Waterford are playing far better hurling, far more passionate. Down towards Owen Kelly with a ball skidded off the surface. Paul Kirk gives it long, but not very long. Comes in towards Brendan Maher, and he was being fouled by Shane O'Sullivan. So that's a free for Tipperary, which is giving it long. And he certainly uh, felt the challenge as Owen Kelly puts it over the bar for his third point and his second from a free. Coming on for Tipperary is Seamus Callan. Roman Inchman coming off his Garod Rye, the number 10. And it's Dicko. But Kevin Moore loses it too easily. Shane O'Sullivan is there and it's Moore in the game. Under pressure. Severe pressure. Goes out over the sideline. Despite his best efforts to give it to his captain. Sideline ball for Tipperary. Davy Fitzgerald, who celebrated his 39th birthday in Castle Martyr, the hotel down there where Waterford had a secret training camp. But the party will be a little bit subdued if Waterford don't get to that All Ireland final. Seamus Callan trying to make an immediate impression. That ball is what? Scored a goal, of course, in the All Ireland quarter final after being introduced. This time, it's Clinton Hennessy that gives the short tuck out to Liam Law. Four mile water in the beautiful Valley Macabre area of Waterford that was famous for many years for ladies' football. And indeed, men's football with the Nair. Here's Lara Corbett. There's a response. Goal and two points for the Thurlis Sarsfield star in his 42nd championship appearance for his county. Great point. Coming on for Waterford is Ken McGrath. And going off is Owen Kelly. While he was good from uh, freeze, he wasn't that much involved in play. I don't think he'd be too happy about taking, being taken off. Seamus Pelt in his first effort at uh, scoring, well blocked by... He's an experienced player, he'd have a simple chance then. Effort in by Noel McGrath. Here comes on Kelly! The ball is in the net! Tipperary could be heading back here to Grove Park on the first Sunday in September. It came from Noel McGrath, the ball in, keep an eye on the 14. Owen Kelly, simple little touch, made a space and tucked it away beautifully past Clinton Hennessy. It was all down to the wrist work. The finish sublime. Well, isn't it funny how things work out for you, Marty? You know, Seamus Callum, brilliant block by Declan Prendergast on him and, you know, danger cleared and then ball in and Owen Kelly, simple into the back of the net and a blood sub, I think, John O'Brien finger injury. So Tipperary against Clare in Pearl as he's on and uh, he's going to take his place. He started against Cork in Parky Key. He comes on momentarily at least for John O'Brien. Coming through the middle it's Brendan Maher. Shane O'Sullivan. Just when Waterford were beginning to find their rhythm and momentum and putting up a challenge to Tipperary they concede a goal to the stick work of Owen Kelly. Liam Lawler 
looks around for support. Goes back for Shane O'Sullivan. Floating one in. Nice ball to Stephen Malumphy. Gaddox. He loses out because he's fouled. And that's going to be a free in for Waterford. Free by Ken McGrath. He's tapped over the bar. And they needed that to settle themselves just a little bit. Dan Shanahan is coming on for Ken Kevin Bourne. As Waterford acknowledged that they need to rejig their attack. Kevin Moran scored a point. That was in the first half. And here comes once again a quick puck out, which Waterford have been unable to counteract all afternoon. But then lobbed the ball into their full forward line. And by the way, that temporary full forward line has scored two goals and nine points out of that temporary total of 214. That's a substantial amount, and it's a game plan that Liam Sheedy obviously uh, has engineered, starting with the quick puck outs from Brendan Collins. Ball into space. Owen McGrath. Under pressure this time. Arriving, John Milan. Taken out of it by Declan Fanning. And John Milan is disgusted. Helmet, Hurley, everything is gone. And John Sexton might take stern her action because John Milan has been pretty well uh, hit, most of it fairly, I have to say, but it's going to be interesting to see what John Sexton decides here. Looks like a yellow card for Declan Fenn. That's the fourth yellow card for Tipperary. Seven points between the teams. 15 minutes still to go. So John O'Brien, by the way, blood substitute for him, comes back off the post. And it's wide. Off the stick of Ken McGrath. Little things like that make you think maybe it's not going to be our day. I was saying anyway that John O'Brien is coming back on. He was wearing number 12 previously, but because obviously he picked up an injury and there was some blood in his jersey, he's now going to wear number 31. And he's now operating right corner forward with Larry Corbett over the left corner. Michael Brickwatch. Easily intercepted again by Shane McGrath. Sent down the line by Richie Foley. Great catch by Torrey Mark. Needs to work to clear it out of his area of the field. Good catch again by Tony Brown. Hand pass is required to seek and find Owen McGrath. Declan Fanny comes into challenge. Stephen Malumphy about to be blocked by Lars Corbett. He gets in his shot, and that's Stephen Malumphy's first point in this All Ireland semi final. It means now that the entire Waterford half forward line have scored. The only man, in fact, in the Waterford attack not to score yet is Shane Watch. This was a good point by the Waterford captain. A good score, Marty, and they needed it. You know, only six points between them, but Tipper handing them back the initiative to have a chance maybe to finish the game off and, you know, they just relax a little bit more if they've come back into it now again and will probably force the issue a little bit. Corey Ma. Going high and very high, but also very wide. Noel McGrath taking these long range frees now. Scored four times in the first half. It's his fifth and first from a free. And really, Mark, you know, midfield and the tip half forward line, they have a little bit of a dominance, and um, you know, there's 12 minutes left or so now, and uh, it's time that they pushed on. Quick puck out, didn't quite work out. Noel McGrath nips in and puts it straight between the posts for his sixth point of the game. Brendan Cummins and Don Lowe Cusick might have the short puck outs mastered, but I'm afraid Clinton Hennessy gave the ball short. And his colleague didn't react quickly. He was waiting for the ball, and that's why Noel McGrath nipped in. No fault in Clinton. Ball dropping in here. Perhaps down the man can do something as a chance didn't quite connect and is cleared off the line by Michael Cahill. 
Kim McGrath. Difficult enough angle. And that's a great point. The second since being introduced. They still believe, but only just. Yes, yeah, super pointer by Kim McGrath, Marty, but. Uh, before that, the ball fell to Declan Prendergast, or to Seamus Prendergast, needed a little bit of coolness, could have even taken it to his hand, and that was a good goal chance that uh, went to begging. Law Corbett, the red one, seeking the space, the opportunity to carry. Here's another one. Brilliant goal. Three goals and nine points. The Tipperary full forward line have now scored. Make it 3 10. Tipperary are already looking for their All Ireland final tickets. It was Lark Corbett that created it through sheer hard work. He set up Owen Kelly. He turned and he blasted it past Clinton Ennison. Well, brilliant skill from Lark Corbett. Two little fix that took him away from the defenders and then a lovely pass that uh, gave the ball to the advantage of Owen Kelly and he did the rest. Uh, you know, game over no Marty really. 10 points in it with 10 minutes left and it's going to be all tipped from here on in. Well picked up here by Owen McGrath. Tipperary can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Great catch by John O'Brien. Not a good... At the right time but you felt that if John O'Brien just held the ball that he could have uh, played in Owen Kelly again. Water would have to come up with something special now, I'm afraid. And this is the man. John Milan hits a shot. Great save by Brendan Cummins. Brilliant stop. Two brilliant hurlers, man to man, facing each other. One for Waterford, one for Tipperary. Here comes Milan. Here comes Cummins. Well, a good save, Marty, but he needed to put that deep down into the corner and he got a slight hook on it. Um, the, the, the tip defence got a slight hook as he was striking the ball and knocked out for the 65, but that was the chance that Waterford needed to get back into the game. Tony Brown with the free. Wrapping it just over Brendan Cummins' crossbar for his second point of the game. You see the shot from John Milan there, a good save from Brendan Cummins, but a good hook by Conor Mann. He just, just, just got in the vital half hook and uh, it took the sting out of uh, Milan's play. Pa Burke has been introduced to the temporary attack for Patrick Maher. It's a half hook. Shane O'Sullivan. They're waiting for it. And temporary are chasing everything. Ken McGrath. Given incredible service to club and county. Seamus Prendergast to Malumphy, the Munster champions, metal tested. See what I mean in terms of chasing everything. Tipperary are there three, sometimes four players chasing after it. Going back to gather this, Paddy Stapleton gets there ahead of Malar. Declan Fanning calling for it. Swings it over to this side in front of the Hogan stand. Lola. Back out for his left half back, Declan Prendergast. James Callan chasing after him. Still Declan Prendergast. For tips play, they've given too many easy frees away. Uh, Declan Prendergast was looking for something. Going for goal here. Stopped again by Declan Fanning. Gives it back to Michael Cahill. And like most cornerbacks, they're happy to deliver it along out of their territory. Here's Michael Brick Walsh continuing to sweep up any loose ball in that half back line. Pumping it in high towards Dan Shannon. Chance here for Milan. Bit remote because he was under severe pressure. And every time he's near the ball, he seems to be fouled. Dan Shanahan knocking it down here for John Milan. Free in for Waterford. Go from here. Ken McGrath, blasted, reflected out for a 65, seemed to have hit the hurl of Shane McGrath. Second 65 for Waterford.
And all of this, Marty, eats down the clock. And all Tipple want to do now is try and keep control from here to, you know, the nine points up. Keep control from here to the to the end. Waterford will be forced to try and get get goals when there'll be point chances and and uh, if they don't get that, well, the defence normally grows and grows psychologically. Tony Brown. What will he do? Drop it in. Try and take the point. Okay. And he takes the score. That's three points for Tony Brown. Waterford are going to introduce a substitute. Coming on is uh, Tommy Ryan. And he's going to take the place of the team captain, Stephen Malumphy. Tommy Ryan from Tallow. He's 20 years of age. Normally plays corner forward. Mentioning corner forwards, there's Lara Corbett. And it's struggling to try and get it out of that area. Michael Big Walsh. Owen Murphy. Referee eventually says it's going to be a throw ball. And Marty, we were talking beforehand about the, you know, the tactic of uh, negating Michael Walsh. That's only the second puck out from Brendan Cummins that has gone down to that area. More scores coming for Tipperary and for John O'Brien, his fifth of the game. All of them from play. Declan Fanning, Brendan Maher is there. It looks like Fanning. It is Fanning that's coming out with it. Plays it out for Conor O'Mahony. Goes long down towards Owen Kelly. Sidesteps the initial challenge from Brick Walsh. Gives it back towards Noel McGrath. And that's going to be another free for Tipperary. Well, it just shows how, how false the Munster championship was, Marty. I, I think Tip came down to Parky Cueve, somewhat uh, rather complacent. I think they felt that they'd get over Cork and that they'd build from there. Um, they got a bit of a rude awakening at there, but really, um, you know, they, they were the top team in Munster and they're showing it now. Owen McGrath, Owen Kelly, I should say, takes his point. And, uh, perhaps it was ominous for Waterford because in last year's Munster final, just mentioning that they didn't do so well but uh, certainly here the punters are leaving well, I'll give you that uh, statistic in just a moment as we concentrate here on Michael Brick Walsh in last year's Munster final the Tipperary full forward line scored 3-8 between them they now have 3-11 scored in this semi-final here's a chance neatly tucked away well taken goal of Waterford stay alive if only just this was the long ball in Dan Shannon causing Paul Curran a few problems and in the sunshine they lost it and there at the end of it was Owen McGrath to flick it beyond Brendan Cummins. Yeah, Owen McGrath making a long run and just being at the end of it and just a nice flick. Owen Murphy. It's all the way back for us, Clinton Hennessy. You know, some of those missed opportunities for Warford, Warford I'm sure they're going to regret them because if they have taken them, and obviously they'll be a lot closer, two or three, maybe four points between them. That's the luck of the draw, I suppose, when your shooting is not in from freeze, but they are vital. Which will bring about the debate about taking off Owen Kelly. Well, the thing about it, Mark, is that, you know, when the nine points on, some forward lines fall into the trap of going for goals too early, where, you know, three or four points will bring you back in the game, because there's always a chance that the, that the defence will relax and you'll get a chance as, as well for you there. Ken McGrath, that's his third point. And it will also, I'm sure, Donald, considering Ken McGrath's performance, I know it's late in the game and Tipperary look like they haven't won, and even allowing for that, but his impact here is quite impressive. Perhaps he was the one that should have started and not Brian Arnold. Well, I thought it was a big gamble playing, you know, a young player like that, and very rarely does it work, Marty, and it failed miserably, and it brought Paul Curtin and the Tipperary defence into the game. They had great confidence after 20 minutes, and they really Waterford weren't able to break them down from there on. Owen Murphy. Has to go back to his goalkeeper again to execute the long delivery. His forward line. Oh, that's great hands. Brilliant play. Now Corbett gets the pass from Brendan Ma. There's trouble again. It's Cannon. Oh, that's great defending by Brick Walsh. Noel Connors. It was Brick Walsh that provided the hook that prevented Cannon from scoring. Declan Prendergast gives it long. Down towards his brother. Looping this one in towards. John Milan, easily won, however, by Paddy Stapleton. 
Gets it out first, Declan Fanny. Noel Connors, high challenge by John O'Brien. Long free from Michael Brickwatch. <laughs> to Corbett. Put a little bit too much into it. It's an easy ball for Declan Prendergast. Up towards Dan Shannon. Seamus Prendergast. Milan. Drives it across the face of the goal and what? Dan Shanahan letting John Milan <laughs> know his opinion. I think he felt that a pass would have been a better option. We're into injury time. And I think at this stage, Brian Cody knows it's going to be a repeat of the 2009 All Ireland final. As he and his team bid for that five in a row, the drive for five. Will it be temporary? Will they be good enough to stop them? As they add another point, that's six points all from play for John O'Brien. And he wants the puck out to be taken again. Seven points between the teams. Well, I think Tip will be well pleased with the display and they'll be pleased such that they made enough mistakes as well that they have to walk on for the, for the final mark. But, you know, they were in control really here um, from the world goal. was forwards really failed to trouble the defence and then, um, as we said earlier, the, the player claimed by the Hallam didn't really work and, you know, Tip has been in control. Made, made things difficult for themselves by giving away some silly phrase, but they own the ball at the moment. Tony Brown delivers it long. Dan Shannon underneath it, and look where Lara Corbett is. He's supposed to be playing full forward or corner forward. I remember Pascal Land doing that in football many years ago with Kerry. It's Tipperary against Kilkenny in the All Ireland Senior Hurling Final of 2010. David Fitzgerald congratulates Liam Sheedy. Lara Corbett scored a goal and two points. The first goal was crucial for Davy Fitzgerald, manager of Waterford for two years and two months. It's heartbreak. Richie Foley congratulates Michael Cahill and Tipperary. For the eighth time since 1997, there's a team which was beaten in the provincial championship. They reached the All-Ireland final. Tipperary did it themselves in 97. For Owen Kelly, however, it's heartbreak for fair play. There are the Kellys. Owen Kelly meeting Owen Kelly. Ken McGrath being quite gracious in defeat, commiserating with his uh, colleagues and congratulating the winners as Owen Kelly will once again face into Croke Park. But it is, of course, the eighth time that a county that has been beaten in the provincial championship will head back to Croke Park. Offaly, Clare, Kilkenny themselves in 0-4, Limerick and Waterford are all the teams that have come through the qualifiers. For Shane McGrath, there's no doubt about it, but his best position is in the middle of the field. And for Paul Kern, what a revelation at full back. He certainly dominated the early scores. For left corner back, Michael. Uh centre back, you know, Conor Mahoney mm. back to himself again. The mm. two boys midfield, M McGrath and Brendan Maher, brilliant. And then up front, Noel McGrath, uh, Noel McGrath had a great game centre forward. That's was John O'Brien had a game of his life, got five points in play. When Noel Kelly seemed to be going quite excellent, he pops two goals and Larry Carver. These guys, it was a great team effort. And like, OK, there was one of the two lads didn't play well. They'll be very, very confident going through. I know often be disappointed, but I can tell you one thing, the people that think that it's a cakewalk <coughs> in the park for Kilkenny for the five in a row, they'll have different things to say tonight because this tip team have kind of... They were the last week. They're be a cakewalk in the well, park, but not, not, not for Kilkenny because anything can happen tomorrow. As soon as you go for five or four, no, absolutely, it's a different game. Ball now, right? Yeah, but Tomas, Kilkenny, hold on a minute, it is, now, you know? hold on a minute, you're cutting it all day. Hold on a minute now. When you're trying to win four or five in a row, things outside the game can go wrong for you. Mm. Kilkenny, Shefflin, Kilkenny. Uh, uh, Tommy Watts Tommy we, we gather has there's suffered a lot, an injury there's a, there's a lot of things that can happen but. and like ok Kilkenny will still be favourites but to me the game is going to be 50-50 after because Tip are back where they were and they're, 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 they will improve again from it they're very good display and they're right like they'll be happy to be there and like Kilkenny are running into trouble off the field Right, it's your turn on the ball. No, right. <laughs> no speak, interruptions. Can I speak now, sir? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, Master. <laughs> no, great team performance, I must say. You know, and kind of there in the second half period, you, you give credit to Warford. They did, they did up the ante, but they went back to the traditional 15 
uh, placements on the mm. field as well, right? And and brought the game to Tipperary. And at times you were saying, but geez, are they going to do this? Because they really actually knocked over a couple of points. And like the one thing that I, I, I thought was wrong about Tipperary's game today was bringing on Kelly way out the field for freeze. That were crucial freeze, yeah. that crucial mm. periods Facial. in the game, right? He's very much better in the closer to goal taking those freeze. And when they switch him to Noel McGrath, he nailed two sixty fives, which I think were crucial freeze in that second half period. Again, you say all oh, Kenny up front was quiet, I mean, but again gets the two goals and they were the important scores at the end of the day. Okay, let's let's hear from the Tipperary boss. That of course is the M Sheedin. He's now talking to Joanne Cantwell. Well, Liam, I know you'd be disappointed with the goal at the end, but apart from that, would you call that comprehensive? Yeah, you know, I mean, Waterford are a top-class side. You know, we knew they were going to bring a huge challenge to our team today, you know, and in fairness to the lads, they, they prepared really, really well, and thankfully, you know, we, we needed every bit of it. You know, in fairness, we, we got we got the goal at the vital stage in the first half, and it just gave us a bit of impetus going into half-time. And, uh, you know, in fairness to Waterford, they came roaring back at us again at the start of the second half, got three unanswered points. Which, God, this is, you know, because in fairness, they, they, have, they have real fighting qualities in that dressing room. But, you know, we found our flow again, and we struck some lovely scores, and, uh, you know, just overall delighted with the performance. You know, again, we've, we've racked up a nice score up here so it's, it's just great to be back in the final and tactically you look to have got it spot on would you agree with that well you know Joanne every time you win you get it right tactically and every time you lose you get it you get it wrong you know so that's that's just the way it goes you know in fairness just give the lads their space give them their room and let them play you know in fairness they, they do that and they love what they do and you know their commitment and effort you know since since the end of May has been has been impeccable and you know as a Tiberi man to be involved in them I'm very proud of them but puck acts all worked a treat, no McGrath's positioning worked well? Yeah, it was just today where everything seemed to flow for us, you know, and in fairness the lads, you know, they got some great scores, you know, and owns two goals in the second half, you know, and even you know, John O'Brien struck some great points at vital stages. And in fairness to Waterford, they never they never stopped trying, you know, and they had us back to six points and you said, God, if they get another goal here, but in fairness to the lads, they, they stood firm and just delighted to be back in the final. Yeah, you speak about Waterford's fighting quality, but that's absolutely something that's there in this tip side as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. In fairness to them, you know, they've 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 had their backs to the wall before, you know, and they've they've come out fighting, and you know, it's just just as I said, it's 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 really great, you know, because you know, there's a lot of hard work goes into every team, I guess, but this bunch especially, I think, in the last few months, have worked really really hard, and you know, they they, they crave to get back into an All Ireland final, and you know, thankfully we're we're in there now, you know. You mentioned Owen Kelly. There are obviously big worries about him over his back. It's nice to have somebody half injured out there being able to do things like that. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, he's a special player. You know, and I think the game needs needs to have all the special players. But you know, Owen is Owen is top class. You know, he he didn't really get much chance to train in the last number of weeks. He gave his he gave his back a twinge. But I, I think you just see how much he that guy wants it. You know, and I guess when the adrenaline of a big game starts to flow, you know, you, you don't feel any pain. And I'm, I'm sure he'll be sore in the morning. But it's all worthwhile now. I bet it is. You came so close to Kilkenny last year. How close do you think this tip team is to last year? Are they better and similar about Kilkenny? Just let me catch me written and talk to you in the morning. Is that fair enough? No questions about the cats. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, absolutely. As I said, today was all about qualification. Uh, you know, we wanted to get back into a final. You know, as I said, two years ago we put down a horrible three weeks in the build-up to the 08 final, and you know that was in the back of our minds today. We didn't want to come out of here, so having come out of here now, we're just delighted to be back in the final. Oh, well done and good luck with it. All right, thanks, John. Today they won their place into that All Ireland final. That's all that matters, I suppose, at this stage. The thing about it is, Ger, you know, Waterford gave it their best shot, I guess. But but when the game loosened up, we say towards the last 15 minutes, 